Hi everyone, welcome back to the Divine Healing with Love channel. I am Nicole. I am so grateful to have you here with me today. Welcome back to the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. Thank you all so much for all of your love, support, encouragement, likes, commenting, donations. I just love you all so much. I'm so grateful for all of you. I'm just grateful that you are here. You're tuning in. You're present. You're showing up for yourself. You're doing the work. You're being intentional. I'm proud of you. Keep going. This is healing for you. It's healing for me. I'm so grateful we could work together to continue to become our best selves. So this was a request from someone from the Capital LLVE tribe. Uh, a couple of people were asking for more of the family healing videos. So these videos could be very triggering. And I took a break from doing these videos because, you know, I'm here to give you the message. But I know these things could be very triggering and difficult. But I just want you to know that these messages are given with love. Honestly, I'm just channeling, you know, but they are given with love. And I love you, and I want you to have this awareness so you can heal and move forward, so you can get unstuck. A lot of times, family trauma, generational trauma, family wounds can really keep us stuck and stagnant in places that we had no idea. You know, we didn't even know we had these issues. And a lot of times it relates to family, okay? Our parents, grandparents extended family, siblings, whatever the case is, okay? So this is a message for you to heal, for you to know the truth. Because once you know the truth, now you are aware. And now you could do something about it to heal yourself so you could have freedom. To release yourself from the pain, release yourself from the trauma, and release the next generation and the generations to come from the trauma and the pain. And that's the point of these videos. So I just want to say that. So, you know, trigger warning already. These videos will probably be, I mean, these piles will probably be very triggering because these aren't gonna be ancestor messages, messages from your ancestors. And those could be some of the most triggering readings, at least from my standpoint, from channeling, those could be, I mean, it could feel even more triggering than the messages from spirit, to be honest. Okay, so we have pile one. This is sacred fool. And the number 40, which reduces to the number four. Pile two. What do you feel? Number nine. And then pile three. Power of attraction, 13, which reduces to number four. Okay, timestamps will be linked below. Pick whichever pile you are guided to. Um, if you pick more than one pile, that is okay too. There's no rules here. You follow your intuition, follow your inner guidance, and make the best choice for yourself. Otherwise, thank you, and I will see you in your reading. Pile one, welcome to your reading. If you chose this card, Sacred Fool, welcome back to the Divine Hill of Love channel. Welcome back to the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful to have you here. Um, thank you so much. I hope you are well. Let's get into it. Okay, so Sacred Fool. Um, this is already giving me messages that many of you are just ready for a new start, ready for a new beginning. The Fool always represents a new beginning in tarot, a new start. So this is giving me energy of you um, co-creating and manifesting a new beginning and a new start. For many of you, you may be feeling like you're in between right now. You've been doing the work, you've been letting go, releasing, you've been finding yourself on a deeper level, you've been um, opening yourself up more to yourself, being more vulnerable with yourself, vulnerable with others. You know, we see here she's naked. So you are embracing vulnerability, you're embracing who you really are, you're becoming more comfortable in your body, more comfortable with who you are. And now you are in this place of co-creating something new 
grounding some new energy, grounding a new beginning, coming out of the darkness. And for many of you, your ancestors are saying this is part of the plan. You are changing the narrative for your family. You're changing the narrative for, um, particularly, I'm feeling definitely for your maternal side here. If this is a mother wound I'm feeling already, like for maybe your mother and your grandmother and your great grandmother on your maternal side, there's a freedom here that's coming out. You're freeing them. You're, free, you're changing the narrative. You're changing the trajectory of how the things that were done in the past with, you know, whether it's the woman or if you're a man, it doesn't matter. You're changing it for your maternal side of the family, okay? Gender doesn't matter here. This is just a new beginning, but this is healing that maternal wound. I'm feeling very strongly that many of you, um, you've dealt with, or your again, your mother or grandmother, there were situations with not having not being able to be free or being confined or having to do things a certain way because of this is what other people did or it's like a limitation energy, being limited by circumstances or limited and bound to things and not being able to be free, not being able to go for it, okay? So you're trying to go for it. You, you want to take that leap of faith. The Fool speaks about leap of faith energy, trusting, having faith, trusting in the divine, trusting in the universe, being bold, being brave to jump out there and do something that's never been done. Okay, so let's get some messages. What do you need to know with your family healing? Okay, this just don't feel right. They put a spell on you. Mental illness. Call a family meeting. What are you holding on to? alcoholic broken hearted okay y'all are all wrong Sex with a pet. What family member comes to mind right now? Something ain't right at church. Blackmail. What happened in the bathroom? Time to cut them off. And karma. Okay. <clears throat> All right. It's a lot here. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Let's get going here. All right. Oh. Fix that later. Okay, so it's a lot here. Trigger warning. I said that in the opening. I'm not trying to trigger you. I'm giving you these messages with love. I love you. And these are messages that you need to know right now, okay? So for the ancestors want you to know, there's an energy of blackmail here. Let's start here. It could be something going on. Some of you may be connected to the church, or you may have an affiliation with the church, or your family may be involved with the church. But there could be, I'm getting for some of you, this is not for everyone, but there's some type of blackmail situation that has occurred in the church or... Um, the church is trying to blackmail you or the church has created this narrative around who you are that's not really true, okay? I'm also getting here, some of you are being blackmailed and you're being blackmailed by somebody that put some type of spell on you or 
then this again, you take the messages that resonate. There are a lot of messages coming through and every message may not be for you, but you just take what resonates. For some of you, someone has put some type of spell on you, some type of binding spell to keep you with them. They feel like you're trying to move away. You feel like it's not right anymore. You don't really want to hold on to this situation. Um, you're ready to move forward, but you feel like you can't let go. For some of you, this person has put some type of spell on you to keep them, to keep you with them or to keep you stuck, to keep you bound to them, tied to them. Because for some of you, you've been broken hearted by this person. Okay. They broke your heart or something went on with this person and you've been ready to move on because you feel like, you know, you don't feel right in this situation. And it's because they put a spell on you. For some of you, again, this blackmail thing is really powerful here. Someone is trying to blackmail you. I'm hearing sex, lies, and videotape. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing it's some type of, you know, um, salacious pictures or some type of video. It could be a sex video. Something with you or involving you or something like that. And someone is trying to blackmail you. They're trying to use this to keep you stuck. They're trying to use this against you to keep you here. Now, some of the family trauma here, some of you are dealing with alcohol issues. You may be an alcoholic or you have codependency issues. If it's not alcohol, it could be addictions to other things. Like I'm hearing work, it's a work addiction here, okay? An addiction to food I'm hearing, and I'm also hearing an addiction to um, just people, okay? Needing to be around people, needing to be with people, okay? So if it's not alcohol for you, it's some other type of attachment or addiction. This is something that needs to be healed. For many of you, there has been a long line of mental illness and it's been directly attached to alcohol. The mental illness is something that there's been this imbalance in the family, particularly on the mother's side, the maternal side. There's been an unhealthy imbalance with the mental state. It's been a lot of obsessiveness, obsessive thinking, obsessively needing to be in control. Um, the thoughts, it's something with the thoughts. It's like the thoughts have been very just very detrimental. For many of you on this mother side of the family, no one knows about this um, imbalance, okay? It's a situation where, you know, on the mother side of the family, they clean up very well. They look very presentable. They had looked like they have it all together, but there's been some mental illness here with depression and just this imbalance in the thought process. And it's going back, I'm hearing for some of you, it's connected to sexual abuse, okay? Um, something has happened. The ancestors want you to pay attention. They want you, there's some type of repressed memories here, what happened in the bathroom. For some of you, you may have been um, molested, uh, abused. I'm so sorry. I'm sending you so much love. But you may have been um, abused in the bathroom or taken advantage of. Okay, um, you know, touch inappropriately or, you know, again, some type of inappropriate behavior with an adult when you were a child. And I'm feeling like this is a repressed memory for some of you. And this is something that's going to be coming up because it's time to heal this. Okay. Um, okay. Some of you are dealing with a broken heart energy. There's a heartbreak here, and I'm feeling for many of you, it's a heartbreak with, it could be a mother wound, okay? It could be feeling heartbroken that you didn't feel protected by your mother, or you felt abandoned by your mother, or you felt like your mother was not there for you the way your mother should have been there for you. There's some type of heartbreak energy around the mother. For some of you, I'm hearing this is, again, generational. This is something where your mother didn't feel protected or guided or supported by their mother. And the same for the grandmother and the great-grandmother and then the great-grandmother. And it just goes on and on and on. So this is something that needs to be healed. You're going to have to forgive your mother if you felt like your mother abandoned you or did not protect you. You're going to have to forgive your mother and you're going to have to give your mother grace. You're going to have to come change your perception. I'm not saying that what happened was right. 
I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this. You're going to have to understand that your mother did the best that they could. If your mother abandoned you or did not protect you, it was not because your mother did not love you, okay? Your mother did the best that they could with what they had. So you're going to have to shift your perception and forgive. Because what happens is the more you hold on to this, because you're holding on to a lot, the more you hold on, the more it builds that resentment, anger, and bitterness, and you're, you're stuck, you're trapped, you're not free, okay? This is about your freedom. This is about you freeing yourself. Because when you forgive, you, you allow freedom. You receive freedom. For some of you, you need to have a family meeting because when you have this family meeting, you're going to have to tell everyone. Um, it's something about telling, opening up the dialogue for For some of you. If you're supporting your family, <clears throat> it's time to cut them off. So the family meeting needs to be about this, about people in the family need to gain their independence. They need to understand that you're not going to be able to support everyone and support everything that you're doing. It's time to cut them off. It's time for people to find their own independence without you. You're going to have to remove yourself. And you need to do this because this is about people. They have to not be so codependent on you. Again, this is about your freedom. You want freedom. You want this new journey. You want this new start. So these are the things that have to be cleared away in order for you to get on that page of freedom. Okay? So you have to call a family meeting. And... When you do this, you need to say this from a place of love and for you to say that now you have boundaries. Now you understand things differently moving forward and you have to do things in order to protect yourself and your children or your family or whatever you have going on. You can't support everyone. That's not your job anymore. You're doing more of a disservice to the family by continuing to support and give and give and give. They're never going to be able to figure it out on their own if you continue to do that. So this needs to be addressed. <sighs> Sex with a pet. For some of you, I'm hearing this is not for everyone. For some of you, I'm hearing that you, as a child, you saw an adult do something inappropriate with a dog or something like that. Or you saw a family member kill an animal or, you know, basically violate an animal. Okay. So this is something that needs to be healed. And it may be the family member that comes to your mind. You know, for some of you, I'm hearing it's a cousin. For some of you, I'm hearing it's a brother. For some of you, I'm hearing it's a father figure. Okay. So, and it doesn't have to be, but it's some type of memory around that that needs to be healed because I'm hearing it was some type of like um, show, like, you know, violating this animal's cool or looking, you know, like some type of so-called power grab, okay? So-called, like, look how powerful I am. I do this to animals. I'll kill an animal off or I will touch an animal inappropriately. You know, something like that. So that needs to be healed. This is not for everyone. You take what resonates, okay? Um, you are not in this place where you feel like everything is right. Something feels off and you're dealing with a lot of karma right now. There's a lot of karma here. There's a lot going on where it's just a lot. I'm feeling like many of you are dealing with a lot. You may be also trying to balance out your um, mental stability, okay? There's this thing of balance, and I feel like for some of you, there's a lot of obsessiveness going on in your mind where you may not know what's real and what's not. So there needs to be a level of groundedness. There needs to be a level of focusing in the moment, focusing in your present reality, focusing on what's right in front of you. For some of you, with your mother wound, this mother wound, this resentment that you have, or this whatever this issue is that you have with your mother, the grandmother, this is really putting you in a place of inaction, fear, and not being able to trust, okay? Because for some of you, you're not able to trust the opposite sex because of this wound. It doesn't matter your gender. You have an inability to trust the opposite sex because of this mother wound, because you did not feel either protected or you felt abandoned or... You didn't feel supported enough or something like that, okay? And this is causing you to feel, 
I had to take a deep breath because it's basically like it's causing you, it's keeping you in a place of still being heartbroken. And for some of you, um, I'm hearing that, you know, your mother has passed on or um, a grandmother has passed on or something like that before you were able to express some of these things, okay? And if this is the case where they have passed on, you need to um, write them a letter. Write them a letter and read it aloud and just write everything you're feeling and they'll be able to hear it. And when you do that, forgive them. Forgive them in this letter and release it, okay? Release it. You could burn it. I would say burn it because that's like releasing it. But you need to write a letter and read it aloud and they will be able to hear it. And then you could really release this pain because there's a lot of pain here. Okay, let's get a couple messages before we get to your healing oracles. What do the ancestors want you to know? You have healing and support available, mentor and guru, wealth, highly sensitive. We have good karma, earth angel, soul family, and all the clairs. So your, um, your spiritual gifts are being upgraded, okay? And let me tell you why your spiritual gifts are being upgraded. Your spiritual gifts are being upgraded because you have good karma coming your way. And the more you accept your sensitivity and respect your sensitivity, respect the fact that you are very sensitive, respect the fact that you can't do things like everyone else, Take time to take care of yourself. Get the rest when you need to get the rest. Drink the amount of water that you need to drink. Take care of yourself. The more you respect and love your sensitivity, the more you will be spiritually upgraded. Many of you will be mentoring many people or you have a mentor coming your way to help you, to help you unlock more. You may have a mentor coming for some of you, or for some of you, you will be mentoring people or you are a mentor to people. You have good karma coming your way. You know, you were dealing with a lot of karma before, but now you're going to be receiving more abundance and blessings because good karma is coming your way. You're going to be connecting more with your soul family. Your soul family here on earth, you're going to be connected to them where you're going to be able to see, see these people more, be in communication, feel that support and love on the earth side and in the spiritual realm, okay? You also have wealth coming. You are building generational wealth for your family. Many of you are an earth angel, but for some of you, I am hearing you're an earth angel, but I'm also hearing you have an earth angel coming your way, okay? You have someone that's going to help you come out of the darkness, help you to move forward. You're going to heal with this person, okay? Um, but, you know, your ancestors really want you to know that you have healing and support available to you at any time, okay? Let's get into this. Hostilities, conflict, unrest, loss, lack, fear, victimization, sacred purpose, eternal flame, ancestral legacy. And release dark, the dark wound. Let love live. Going beyond normal. And inspiration. Okay. We have you use your wisdom. Remain center centered. And appreciate everything. 
So you're being asked to appreciate everything. The more gratitude you show, the more you will shift into this good karma. The more you will remain centered, the more you are, you will feel peace, you will feel love, you will feel balanced and calm. So when you feel like you want to complain or you feel angry or you feel like something is bothering you, switch the attitude to gratitude. It's going to make a huge difference in your state of mind, in your being, and in your vibration. With this hostilities and this loss, lack, well, let's start here, hostilities. And 31, that reduces to four. So four is prominent for this group, okay? And four is, again, representing stability, harmony, balance, okay? So there is some hostility or some type of conflict here. You may be holding on to some type of resentment or hostility, or you may have some conflict coming in. We have this Jaguar here. This is talking to me, again, about strength. It's also talking about fierceness, power, agility, flexibility, okay? So be flexible. Be, um, I'm hearing be love. I don't know, something about, some, something is getting ready to happen where you may be having a tense conversation with someone or a um, situation where you're going to be speaking with someone or speaking your truth and it could get, it could feel like this is going to be contentious, but stay balanced, remain centered, okay? Use your wisdom. You have a lot of wisdom. You have a high level of intuition. You are being divinely guided. Always tap in. Many of you are going to be getting more inspiration, more ideas, more of a spark, okay? The bee spirit animal is here. The bee represents community. You're going to be working in your community or working with others, collaboration, hard work, okay? Putting the worker bee energy, putting in the work, making it all come together, going beyond normal. Number 14 reduces to the number five. This is again telling me the spark. The spark is coming through. The third eye is going to be activated. The crown chakra is going to be very strong, putting in the work, going beyond the normal, seeing beyond what you seeing beyond the veil, seeing beyond what's in front of you. Okay. But this release the dark wound, let love live. So there's some bitterness here that needs to be released. There's a dark wound. And for many of you, again, it's a mother wound and it needs to be released. And the time is now to release it because it's holding you back and it's keeping you in a place of victimization, loss, and lack of fear. For some of you, there could be a wound around um, the scarcity wound. Okay. A scarcity issue here. And it could be with the mother side of the family, but a wound around scarcity, not being enough, not feeling like you are enough, not feeling like you are good enough, not feeling like you will have enough. You know, you could be dealing with in and out of feeling like, you know, you're fearful of moving forward with things because of your past, because of the wounds. And those things are not true. Don't let those obsessive thoughts keep circling in your mind. It's not true. You are love. You deserve to be loved and you are enough. Okay. When you release these wounds and release the, the fear and release the pain and the bitterness, this is freedom for you and you free yourself on a deeper level. This is part of your purpose. You working with your ancestors, clearing this karma for the family, clearing this generational trauma. This is ancestral legacy. Many of you are a chosen one. You were chosen by your ancestors to do this work, to clear the wounds, clear the pain, clear the trauma. And that's why they're guiding you to release it and let love live. Put love in those places of darkness and pain. Let love live. Let it go. I know it's not easy to let go. Trust me. I know I do my own work all the time. And I have a lot of ancestral work that I do a lot and it's painful. But the more I let it go, the more I free myself. I want freedom. I deserve freedom. And so when you get to this place, if you're not going to let anything stand in the way of your freedom, you have to ask yourself, why are you holding on? Why, like, why do you want to hold on? Is it because, you know, you feel like you deserve pain? Because you don't deserve pain. You deserve harmony, joy, and peace and love. Okay. So step into that attitude and use your wisdom and use the support that's around you to guide you to where you need to go. So I really hope that helps, Pile One. Thank you all so much. I'm sending you so much love. If no one told you that they love you today, I love you. Thank you for being here. Please like the video, share the video, subscribe, join the Capital I Love You tribe. Um, comment below. If you don't want to say how you've resonated with this, drop a heart. 
and you know that'll be great a red heart thank you all so much i'm proud of you keep going you got this you are so loved and supported you got this keep going thank you and i'll see you in the next reading Hi, pal two. Welcome to your reading. Thank you all so much for being here. Welcome back to the Divine Hail of Love channel. Welcome back to the Capital of the E tribe. I'm Nicole. I'm so grateful to have you here and I hope you are well. So this is your card, pal two. What do you feel? I feel like this is telling me right here, many of you are being guided to make some type of decision because this is giving me like two of pentacles energy here like there's a decision that needs to be made or you're in this juggling act or you're trying to figure out the next step for the next path or where it is that you are trying to i feel a battle with the mind and the heart here like there's a battle with like how you really feel and like what your logical mind is telling you um trying to align the heart and the mind and you know, the mind and the heart can work together, but sometimes you have to choose one or the other. And I feel like that's what this is, choosing the heart or the mind. Which one is, are you really going to go with? But you see here, this card is saying, what do you feel? So this is talking about honoring your feelings, honoring your emotions, letting your heart and your emotions guide you to what it is that you want to do. Now, for some of you, I'm hearing that you're saying, you know, in the past when you did that, you ended up making the wrong decision or things didn't go well. You know, sometimes we can't look at things when we shift our perspective on life we can't look at things as like a good or bad decision, okay? Because honestly, all paths always lead home, okay? Any decision that you make is still going to guide you to where you need to go. But sometimes you make certain decisions in order to learn certain lessons and to deal with certain situations so your soul can grow more, you can unravel your soul more, and you can learn. You come to earth to learn. You come to earth to find yourself, remember who you are, to dig deeper into your soul, your Akashic records, to learn. So sometimes you have to follow your heart and that's about taking that leap of faith and trusting trusting that it's all is well all will be well and even if things don't go in your favor that's about releasing any expectations that you have for the outcome any attachments that you have to the outcome and just going for it and following your heart and letting your emotions guide you but balancing those emotions making sure that you are grounded in your feelings so this is about again what do you feel how do you feel you know really honoring your feelings and honoring it as your truth and like this is what you want and you're going to go for what you want because your emotions are balanced you are balanced, you are grounded, you're not up in the sky, and you're feeling brave and bold to make that decision. Okay, so let's get into it. What is it that you need to know? Okay, trust issues. Put your pride to the side. Child abuse. Okay, these messages will probably be very triggering. I'm sending you so much love. I love you. Um, I'm just going to give you that warning ahead of time. I'm just channeling the message, but this is for your highest good. The secret lies in videotapes. Generational wealth. Your grandmother knows. Time to forgive. Look at the eyes. Nosy Nancy. Family friend. The secret lies in the grave. They did the best they could. You know the answer. Black sheep of the family and poison is the food. Okay. 
All right, let's get into it. Okay, part two. All right, so this is a lot, okay? I'm not gonna, as you can see, this is a lot. This is a lot of energy here. So you take the messages that you feel resonate for you. It's gonna be a lot of different messages. If they don't feel like they resonate, don't take it on. But this could be some type of activation for you. But you just follow your intuition and let your intuition guide you. Okay, so we see here, and this is at the center of the reading, child abuse, okay? Um, for many of you, and again, I love you so much. I'm sending you so much love. But there is this energy. We see here child abuse. For many of you, you were abused as a child. And this is something that's coming up because... It's time to forgive, okay? I know that this is not easy to do. I know that this is not something that is just, again, and this doesn't mean it's sexual abuse. It could be physical abuse. It could be sexual abuse. It could be emotional abuse, okay? But there is some type of abuse that you experienced as a child, and this is something that you're going to have to forgive. You're going to have to forgive the person or the people that inflicted this pain on you, that abused you, okay? For some of you, it's all three. You experienced all of these, okay? For some of you, um, I'm hearing a father abused you. Um, I'm hearing an uncle abused you. Um, I'm also hearing family friend. We see family friend is there. And I'm also hearing, um, you know, so a neighbor, okay? So you're going to have to, because this is affecting you on so many different levels. This has caused and created the trust issues. This has created your inability to trust people, your inability to trust your partners, your inability to trust your friends. You feel like you can't really trust anyone. You have a hard time trusting someone. The person that abused you, you naturally trusted because as a child, you know, for the most part, we trust anyone, right? We don't really know until we that trust is broken. You know, you just have trust, right? Until, you know, something happens and then the trust is broken. And of course, as a child, you really don't know. You're still trying to figure things out and kind of learn. But when those things repeatedly happen, then it's like you start to understand, okay, I cannot trust this person. So whoever did this to you or the people that did this to you, this is what's caused you to have a lot of trust issues. This is what's caused you to feel like you, you know, People, when they get close to you, it's difficult for them to trust you because the person or the people that abuse you, you trust it, you know, and this is part of the truth that has to integrate because even, you know, so let's just say this was a, you know, someone close to the family or a family member that did this to you. It's difficult to, um, yeah, okay. It's like, okay. It's difficult to speak on these things. It's difficult to move forward. It's difficult to um, try to act like, you know, or sometimes when you have these relationships, you try to, when you realize that you have trust issues, okay? When you have these relationships in your adulthood and you're like, why do I have trust issues? Why do I have such a hard time trusting? You know, a lot of times it goes back to childhood your trust being broken at some point with someone that you've trusted. And so this has created this issue for you in your adult life where you have a difficult time trusting. And it's because of this. So this is about forgiving this person. Now, this is not to say you need this person around you. This is not to say that you don't even have to, because for some of you, this person has passed on. Okay, but for some of you, this person, you do still see this person or, you know, you're still around this person, you know, you can energetically apologize and you can, I mean, energetically forgive and you can do your own forgiveness in your own way without physically telling this person that you forgive them. You know, I'm not saying you need to call this person right now and say, hey, I forgive you. If you choose to do that, that's totally fine too. It's your journey. You make your own decisions. But I don't want you to feel like you have to physically tell this person you forgive them, okay? For many of you, it will be therapeutic for you to write a letter and tell this person that you forgive them and forgive yourself and then burn this letter, okay? And this is freeing yourself of this pain because you want to trust again. 
You want to trust again. You want to be open to a loving, healthy relationship, or you want to be open to being able to trust people. But this has to be healed. And you're going to have to put your pride to the side. You know, you may be holding on like this person did me wrong. I'll never forgive them. This person can never get my forgiveness. But when you do that, you keep yourself in prison because you don't have freedom. You're trapped. You're trapped in your own body, your own, like you're literally in prison. This is about freeing yourself and giving yourself that freedom. When you forgive, you're able to free yourself and move forward. Like you're not holding on to that pain. And you may have to forgive a few times. I've gone through situations where through my journey where, you know, I'm doing my forgiveness thing. And I had to do it a few times because I still like the anger was still there. The resentment was still there. So I had to do it again and again and again. And it gets easier every time. But it's about allowing yourself to open yourself up for forgiveness. Okay. And knowing that this is about you, this is not about this other person. You want to free yourself. So for some of you, whatever happened to you, your grandmother knows. Okay. Um, But this is also telling me if the abuser or whatever could have passed away and some secrets went to the grave. For some of you, the grandmother died and the grandmother took secrets to the grave. For some of you, um, it's a grandfather that took secrets to the grave or a mother that took secrets to the grave, okay? But the ancestors want you to know that they did the best that they could. They did the best that they could and that's what you're going to have to shift your perception, see a higher perspective. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't mean that they get a pass. It doesn't mean any of that. But you have to just shift your perspective to they did the best that they could. They didn't know or they did know, but they didn't know what to do. They didn't have the type of strength that you have. They didn't have the type of courage that you had. You know what I mean? So forgive. Forgive anything that they did not, that they didn't protect you or, you know, they did those things to you. You forgive to free yourself. For some of you, you have confronted this abuser and the abuser couldn't look you in the eye or they did look at you in the eye and they lied about it. And your ancestors are saying it's okay because you know, you can see it in their eyes. You know what they did. They know that you know. Okay. For many of you, if you confronted your abuser, this person knows that you know. Okay. They know, they know the truth and they know what you know. And you can see it in the eyes. For some of you, you are being, um, there's some type of videotape with some type of like, it could be like a sex tape or some pictures or something. I'm hearing blackmail. Um, it could be a family friend blackmailing you or someone stole something from you, stole um, some pictures from you or stole some videos from you. I'm hearing from a laptop or something like that or, you know, from your phone. They took some things out of your phone and sent it to themselves and now they're holding it as blackmail. And your ancestors want you to know that you're protected. They want you to know that you're protected in this situation and ask for help. But they're saying that you know what to do and you know the answer. For some of you, I'm hearing as a cousin or something, this person could have been the black sheep in the family, or this person is trying to hold something against you, or like, you know, they're trying, they're, they have secrets on you, or they're threatening to expose you in some way. And your ancestors are saying that you know, like, You know what it is you have to do, but you have to walk in your level of protection and you need to ask for help if you need help, okay? For some of you, you have family friends or family members that are being very nosy right now. They're really trying to be in your business. Um, They're feeling disconnected from you or they're feeling like they don't know what's going on with you and that's bothering them. They want to know what's going on with you. Okay. So you have some nosy people around you. I'm hearing they want to know what's going on with your money or they want to know more about your finances or they want to know what's going on in your life, who you're dating, who you're with, your money. It's about your money and romantic life. So there's some nosy people in your family right now that are trying to find out things about you. And they want to find this out because they want to try to sabotage you or use this against you somehow. So they're being very nosy about your romantic life and your money. So just pay attention to that, okay? Um, For some of you, your ancestors are pointing out your food, your diet, the type of food that you're eating right now is not healthy. And it's 
poisoning you. Poison meaning like it's lowering your vibration. It's making you feel sluggish. It's not healthy. It's not adding value to your life. So you need to reevaluate the food that you're eating, um, reevaluate what you're putting into your body, and it needs to be balanced, okay? I'm hearing it's a lot of eating out, not eating very healthy, using food as comfort right now, using food to give you that... Um, feeling of euphoria or just to make you feel good. So it's time for you to really look at your diet, okay? And look at what, um... but for many of you, you know, this is about the trust issues, okay? These trust issues are deep and your romantic life has been affected because of your, many of you have had people who um, like different, you know, partners and stuff who tried to like really, you know, be connected with you in that way, wanted to really help you, love you, things like that. And you pushed them away because you didn't trust them because of this abuse. It's not easy for you to trust. And you pushed a lot of people away that really tried to help you or love you or really be there for you. And your ancestors are saying, you can no longer do that. That's not healthy. Um, you have to heal this. You have to heal your trust issues around that abuse, okay? And it's not easy to do, but it's coming up because it's time for you to do it and you can do it, okay? Let's get some more messages. Okay. How to. Oh, wow. So called to get so many here, but okay. Very gifted and unique. Stop wishing your life away. Flow with life. Global citizen. So many, okay. Chosen one. Put your plan into action. Faith test. Give and receive, philanthropist, third eye chakra, clear cognizance, ancestors leading the way, new career, spiritual leader, and shaman. Okay, so, all right. So, okay, there's a lot of messages here. So many of you, your ancestors want you to know, the more you heal and forgive, the more these other gifts will be unlocked and given to you, okay? You are a global citizen. You're meant to travel the world. You're meant to help people all around the world. Let me take a sip of my tea. You're meant to help people all around the world. You're meant to be on the go. You're meant to travel and Traveling helps you to find yourself on a deeper level. Traveling helps you to connect with people because many of you are philanthropists and you're meant to help people all around the world, to support causes that will help people all around the world. This is part of your purpose. And your ancestors are saying that the more you heal and forgive, the forgiveness thing is big here because, again, this is blocking your inability to trust. Really, I feel like many of you don't trust anyone. And your ancestors are saying that's not healthy. You cannot continue to go through life at the, in this place of not trusting anyone and not being able to give trust. And again, you may have been hurt so many times, okay? And But when you forgive, you free yourself. Okay, so you are a chosen one. The ancestors chose you, chose you to heal the family trauma, to heal, clear the karma, to heal the generational curses and trauma. But part of your path, this lifetime, and part of the ancestral lessons that, that are here is about giving and receiving and balance. Not giving too much, not taking too much, but doing it in a balanced way. Your relationships, your connections need to be equally balanced, okay? Where you give and receive with another person 
an equal balance. Um, put your plan into action. Many of you have a plan that you need to put into action. Whatever is coming into your mind at this point, that's the plan that the ancestors want you to put into action. And if you can't think of anything right now or nothing is coming to your mind, it will come to you very soon. But many of you know what this plan is and you need to put it into action. Many of you need to get grounded and stay focused in the moment. You're wishing your life away. You, you're constantly with this, I can't wait for next week or I can't wait until this, I can't wait until that. Instead of being grounded and focused in the moment, mindful and present, okay? Um, you're very gifted and unique. These are your gifts that were given to you by, from your ancestors. This is what's needed because you are a chosen one. So it's about you embracing your uniqueness and your gifts. Okay, you have a very strong third eye chakra. Many of you will be considered a spiritual leader. You will be leading your community or leading on a global scale, leading nationally or globally. Many of you will be leading worldwide, okay? People will be following you. Um, you have a new career coming in. And this is a gift from your ancestors. Your ancestors are giving you this gift of a new career, a new choice, a new option of doing something different, moving into a new arena, stretching your gifts more, unraveling yourself deeper, finding yourself deeper. And you're going to be very pleased and happy with this new career. It's going to be very fulfilling. Many of you right now are going through tests of faith. Your faith is being tested. How much do you trust? How much do you believe? How faithful are you? How faithful are you to your journey? How faithful are you to the higher power? How faithful are you to your team? This is the test right now. Can you trust? Can you surrender? Can you give up what you feel and all of that and surrender? Surrender to what's of the highest good, even if it's not, even if it's against what you may want right now. Surrendering to what's for your highest good. OK, that's what I heard very clearly. Surrendering to what's for your highest good and letting go of everything else. So how much do you trust and how much faith do you have? Your clear cognizance ability is growing. The clear knowing, the knowing what to what things are, what it is, being able to see beyond the BS, being able to see people for what they are and know things like you just know, like you just know. OK, and um you have shaman abilities and very strong third eye chakra. But for many of you, I feel like your third eye chakra is blocked right now. Um, and it's, again, because of this healing, okay? It's because of this healing and you got to forgive. But your, your abilities are growing. And, again, the more you heal and unblock, the more they will grow. The more they will just come out. Okay, let's get these other things. Divine Mother Nurturing compassion, grace, miracles, ancient wisdom, river of blessings, releasing constraints, the perfection of your life. Diving for light. Come to life. Okay. Spend the day with God. Rely on yourself. and observe your conversations. Okay, pal two. So right now, you know, <clears throat> I'm feeling for many of you, there is a, you know, this, this wound that's really, again, that's going back to childhood. It's really like, it needs to be purged at this point because it's coming up so strongly in this reading where it needs to be healed. And you have, you have this nurturing, compassion, and grace energy available. You have this available to you from the spiritual realm. Many of you have a feminine energy that's, you know, really one of your main guides. It could be an ancestor, okay? It could be a spirit guide, but there's a feminine energy here that's really offering you a lot of compassion, grace, and nurturing. And they're offering you all of this compassion and grace because they want you to give grace to the people that you need to forgive. 
They want you to give that grace and free yourself. That's all I keep saying. I keep saying because that's all I keep hearing. Free yourself, okay? So you have this available to you. And 37 reduce, reduces to the number 10. So this is completion energy. This is completing a cycle. This is completing so you can move forward, move forward to a new beginning, the next part of the journey. You're being asked to rely on yourself. Let me read the back of this. Look at the issue of dependency. Do you rely upon others to do what you should be doing for yourself? Healing is a solo endeavor. And while we all need support during this process, ultimately the task of self-empowerment rests with us. Your goal to identify and modify the ways in which you release personal responsibility to others. So again, this is like a deep dive here with your healing that it's your sole responsibility. You know, healing is an inside job. Healing is something that you could receive support from others. You could receive help from others. But ultimately, you have to do it yourself. You have to do the work because it's just you. It's about you. Okay. Right now, you have a lot of ancient wisdom available to you. And some type of miracles are trying to happen in your life. Some type of miracles are trying to ground. But you have a lot of ancient wisdom. It's time to tap into that. It's time to, for some of you, you have people around you that are, manipulating you or it's like dark energy around you or you're not able to see clearly you need to spend the day with god you need to go be by yourself go be in nature go be by the water this is a day for you to spend with god a day of prayer a day of silence imagine that you that your entire world is a sacred chapel every inch of your life is filled with grace and the presence of the divine your goal to visualize yourself in the company of heaven every minute of the day you I would suggest for some of you, you need to go be by the water, go be by yourself, just be completely by yourself, unplug, put the phone away. You know, if you have the phone, just like listen to music, but really deep dive into your emotions, allow yourself to deep dive into your emotions. And I just saw 333 and really heal. Okay. And it doesn't have to be this long drawn out thing. Okay. Okay. You know, sometimes when we, I know sometimes, let me speak for myself. Okay. Sometimes when I go on my, like, okay, I'm going to do a deep dive. I go into nature and I'm like, oh, sometimes I'm dreading it. Like I'm enjoying it, but I'm dreading it. Like, oh my God, how long is this going to be? But sometimes it's like, once I let go, I mean, it doesn't matter how long it takes when I'm done with my journey. I feel amazing. And it's just about surrendering to it and letting go and like this is what I need this is what I need to do I'm trusting and I'm going to move with this energy and heal and release it's hard it's difficult it's not easy to face those shadows it's not easy to face childhood wounds you know but it's necessary it's necessary in order to be our best selves so we have here the perfection of your life so some of you may be perfectionists or some of you may have this idea of this perfectionist life or perfection of your life where your life is supposed to be a certain way or look a certain way and you're being asked to let that go the you know nothing's perfect life is not perfect there is no such thing as perfection even though we strive to be perfect you know but that's not real. That's an illusion. So you're being asked to let all of that go and not be attached to perfection, not be attached to like what things look like. It just is what it is and surrendering to that. And guess what? That's perfect for you. Whatever it is, it's great for you. And it doesn't need to be perfect. OK, diving for the light. This is, again, coming out of the shadow, coming out of the darkness and into the light. Bring yourself into the light. With a lot of this green and blue for me, this is heart chakra and throat chakra energy. So you need to do this heart chakra healing and throat chakra healing. OK, and this is going to heal your third eye as well, because this is going to unblock your third eye. OK, that energy moves. Observe your conversations. Some of you are engaging in gossipy or low vibrational uh, conversations or conversations that are just really not that intelligent or they're just not for your highest good. Talking about, you know, mindless, tedious situations with people in order to fit in or because a lot of people, you know, they don't like to talk about, you know, a lot of people enjoy low vibrational talk. Okay. So you're just being asked, and it could be gossip talk or talking about people, judgmental talk. So you're just being asked to observe your conversations and observe the people that you're talking to and what they're talking about. 
because low vibrational energy sucks you in, pulls you in, and puts you in a lower vibration. When your vibration may be naturally high, those conversations will bring you down. And you may not realize it, but it just does. Come to life. Right now, you're being asked to bring, bring these dreams to life. Things could come to life. You're very creative. You know how to create very well. So you're being asked, and you have animal guides here, okay? A monkey is here. You know, this is about your creativity as well. And the more that you heal and unblock, the more you're creative you are and that you could bring these things to life. You could bring whatever it is you want to life. And your ancestors are telling you that. You have that gift. 43 reduces to number seven. You know, you are very divinely gifted, okay? Your gifts are very divine. So I really hope that helps, pal, too. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. Um, I love you. If no one told you that they love you today, I love you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm proud of you. Keep going. Please like the video. Please share the video. Subscribe. Join the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. Comment below. Let me know how this resonated. If you don't want to let me know how this resonated, just drop a red heart, and I would appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next reading. Hi, pal three. Welcome to your reading. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. Welcome back to the Divine Healing with Love channel. Welcome back to the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. I'm Nicole. Thank you for being here. I hope you are well. So you chose this card, Power of Attraction. 13 reduces to number four. Okay, so the ancestors are saying here that you have this incredible gift of law of attraction. You are able to, you're very attractive right now, or you're moving into the energy of being very attractive, where you can attract whatever it is you want. With this image here, many of you are trying to attract conscious connections, a conscious partner, or um you know, a conscious connection with a partner, with a romantic partner for many of you that I'm feeling. It could be friendships as well, but definitely with a romantic partner, you're trying to attract someone that's genuine, that's passionate, that loves, you know, has a depth with them, that loves very deeply, someone that's intentional, that's, you know, really like on a similar journey as you. Okay, this is what you're trying to attract. For many of you, you will be attracting in a soulmate here. Someone that will be able to connect very deeply with you in a very deep space. It's interesting you see here, we, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like we have the bees here for the masculine energy and the dragonflies here for the feminine energy. So you may have been seeing um, bees, okay, or dragonflies. But the dragonfly for me represents like transcending illusion, the truth, flying, flying above the truth, flying higher, again, moving beyond illusion. And the bumblebee represents collaboration, community, working together. So this is, this is also representing like the water here. So this is, again, diving into these emotions. And with the honeycomb here, this is just representing, like, the groundedness, okay? So this is definitely yin-yang energy. Definitely yin-yang energy. You're looking for balanced partnerships, balanced relationships, true, genuine, conscious connections, okay? And for some of you, this is what's coming in for you this year. The ancestors want you to know this. This is really beautiful. This is a beautiful card. Okay, but let's get into what are the messages. Trigger warning. This could be very triggering. Um, I'm giving you this message of love. I love you so much. And this message is coming for your highest good, okay? But this may be triggering, but let's see. Okay. Replay and write down stories. Misuse of spiritual power, the Bible said. It was a lie. Family debt. Secret family. Always judging me.
brother, a mortgage is due. A favorite one. You are in love with somebody else. Marriage expired. Secret affairs. Where is the love and bitterness? Okay. <clears throat> okay, let me let's do this. This is interesting. Okay, let's take a sip of my tea. All right, this is pal three. Pal three. This is, okay, it's quite a few messages here. You take what resonates. Everything may not resonate for you, but you just take what resonates for you. Okay, so. <laughs> The ancestors want you to know that there's definitely been a, a um, an energy of abuse of power within your family. I'm feeling very strongly on the paternal side, on your father's side of the family. There's been an abuse of power, using spiritual power, spiritual knowledge, spiritual gifts to do things for the dark, to do things for selfish reasons, to do things for um, your own, or not your own, but the family's own self-serving type um, situations, basically using the gifts to only serve you, or I mean your family or themselves or whoever has done this in the family, okay? You may have had issues with that, okay? Maybe not, but this is definitely something on your father's side of the family. There's been a long line of abuse of power. And for many of you, you are here to clear that. You are here to change the narrative. You are here to do things differently. Your father's side of the family is extremely powerful. They've always been very powerful. Each lifetime, each generation, the power just increases. Just, I mean, it's like I just got tongue tied. It's so much power from the father's side of the family. I cannot say that enough. This has accumulated because the power was misused so many times. This has accumulated a lot of family debt and karma. This is physical debt, but it's also spiritual debt, okay? It's for both. For many of you, it's both. Um, the family may have experienced a lot of different, again, physical debt, meaning in the material world, being, you know, in scarcity or in debt or having a lot of money and losing it all, having a lot of money and losing it all. One thing about your father's side of the family, they know how to get that money. They know how to get the coin. Again, they're very powerful. They know how to manifest. They know how to get it, but... The way that they get it is not always of the light. It's not always for the highest good of all. It's not always, it's sometimes coming through darker situations, whether it's criminal, whether it's things as far as like, um, you know, being a part of, you know, whatever, like organizations that are dark or connections that are dark, like it could be anything, but these are things that have been that have come through darkness. You have the spiritual power to use it for the light, to use it for to help others. And when you help others, you help yourself. You have this light, the, these gifts to help all, the highest good for all, not just you and your family. So this is the narrative that you're changing. And this is something that was created. The ancestors want you to know that you're fighting. It's not fighting. I don't want to say it like that, but this is generations with your father's side. Eight generations of this. Each generation has become more powerful. So you, my viewer, are very extremely powerful. And your father may be jealous of your power. OK, your father may be jealous of the gifts that you have, because for many of you, you are the favorite one and your father is jealous of that. OK, um, again, I'm not trying to hurt you, but I have to be honest. Um, you're the favorite one. You're the one that everyone knows it. OK, for many of you, everyone knows that you're the favorite one. You're the chosen one. The ancestors chose you. They favored you. For many of you, you may have experienced money issues. Um, dealing with some of the karma from your father, the father's side of the family, okay? Um, not to say you didn't create your own karma, but you may have been in this place up and down with your finances because of 
this debt because like I said, you have a lot of spiritual debt. You're clearing it, but your father's side has a lot of spiritual debt. And this is shit that was passed on to you. And I'm saying it, I could say it because I had to deal with the same thing. Okay. And I'm still dealing with it. So, but I don't want to say it like this is holding you back from where you need to go. It's not, but you have to heal and clear it. Okay. And the more you do in your own life, that's how you clear it. And your ancestors, it's almost like this. You know how people will say like, you put this money up and I match you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, how people will be like, I don't know, like if you need to buy something or you're trying to invest in something and they're like, yeah, if you invest $500, I'll match you or give you a little bit more. It's like your ancestors are saying that. Your ancestors are saying like, heal this and we'll clear this for you. Do this and we'll clear it. It's almost like as much effort as you put into it, the ancestors will meet you and go beyond. But they have to see the effort and the time and the energy that you're going to put toward it. They can't do anything if you're not doing anything. And they want you to know that. And they're like, the more spiritual debt that you clear, the more it's going to manifest in your physical world. For some of you, they're saying it's too much of a focus on the physical world and not enough focus on your healing and clearing the spiritual debt. They're saying all these things work together. But you have to take yourself out of the material world sometime and focus on your spiritual nature and your healing because they're saying it's too much focus on what's going on in the material world. And they're like, you you have to understand that this is all working together. Like if you're not clearing, if you're not healing, like the more you heal yourself, the more it's going to show up in your outer world. You're going to be able to just get it because, again, you're very attractive. You know how to attract you have a huge light. And so the more clearing that you do with your healing, healing these wounds and dealing into your trauma and the pain and thing and forgive people, the more you will be attracted to attract and attract the money, attract the abundance, attract the material things that you want. Okay. So your ancestors really want you to focus in on that healing. Okay. Well, let's get to some other stuff here. Okay. For some of you, your brother is judging you or sister is judging you or they have accumulated a lot of debt and they're constantly asking for money. Okay, you or a cousin here is constantly asking for money and your ancestors want you to cut this off. Okay, they're saying that that's not your problem. You can't continue to do this. You can't continue to save. You can't continue to bail everyone out. You have to focus on yourself. So you're going to have to cut some people off with constantly borrowing money. For some of you, you have a secret family or your father had a secret family, okay? And this is a wound that you're dealing with that was painful for you. Father may have had another family or they started a new life and you felt left behind. Um, or you have a secret family or you're a fit here. For some of you, this is generational. A grandfather had a secret family. The father had a secret family. And maybe you have a secret family as well. So this is something that you, the ancestors, are pointing out because they're saying, again, this is generational. This is the clearing that needs to happen. For some of you, you may um, have had another child with someone else. Or you've had an affair. You cheated on your spouse. Um, or you're thinking about cheating on your spouse. For some of you, your ancestors are pointing out that you're in love with someone else that the relationship or the marriage that you were in, you're no longer really, it's expired. Like, you know, you're not as emotionally invested or you're not feeling, for some of you, you're bored or it's, it's basically like you've been trying to hold on to this person. But if you're really being honest with yourself, the ancestors are saying, you know that you're not happy. You know that you're not fulfilled. You know that things have, have expired. And they're also saying, where's the love? And it could be the reason because this marriage is expired or this relationship is expired. This could be why you're having secret affairs or you've fallen in love with someone else or you just don't feel the love in this connection anymore or this connection doesn't feel the way it used to. And it's because the ancestors want you to be honest with yourself. They want you to really be honest with yourself and let this truth integrate that the marriage has or the relationship has expired, okay? Um, for some of you, the mortgage, you may be, again, having money issues or you're having a lot of debt or bills. And, you know, this is really creating a lot of stress for you. It's creating a lot of tension for you in your life and it's causing bitterness. I am getting this energy 
that some of you are dealing with bitterness and resentment around the father. There's a father wound here, okay? And it could be you may recognize this abuse of power or you may be feeling bitter about being a chosen one or you may be feeling angry and resentful of having to, you know, being the favorite one, being the chosen one, you know, everyone relying on you, you know, it may bring fulfillment or it may have used to, maybe it used to be fulfilling for you to have that role in your family, but now you have bitterness and resentment around it. And the ancestors are saying you could change the narrative. You could change, you know, you could change whatever it is you want. Okay. But it's about you being honest because for some of you, you have been lying to yourself or you just have not been fully honest with yourself, okay? Um, there's an energy here of denial, but there's also an energy of just not always being honest with yourself. You're being asked to write down family stories and events. There's some things from childhood that you that were repressed that you need to take the time to sit down and write it down. As painful as that is, you're going to have to write it down because or replay it in order dive into this repressed memory because this is blocking you from your love connections for you feeling more self-love for yourself and for you to be able to really um really go deeper with your love connection with you know other people in your life okay it's definitely creating a self-love de deficit for whatever happened you know, in your childhood or a family event or something that you need to replay as a repressed memory. For some of you, again, you're feeling very judged by people in your family. And the ancestors are pointing out that, um, you know, that basically the people, you know, they're asking you to really ask yourself, to really be honest with yourself and like really be like, okay, do you really want these people around? And it's not to say you have to cut these people off, but it's just about having those boundaries and not always engaging with people that are judging you or that make you feel like they're always judging you or people that really don't help you to be your best self. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, if they're always kind of bringing your energy down, bringing your vibration down, or just not really making you feel like you can really be yourself, you don't have to have those people always around, you know? And the ancestors are saying that the choice is yours. You know, they don't always have to be around. So let's get some more messages out. Okay, how, how three. Get a couple more. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, third marriage. Highly evolved soul. Career guidance. Needs to be with a lot of people. Alchemist. Twins. Let go of baggage. Past life relationship. Light worker. Communicate with animals. And three children. Okay, so the ancestors want for you to know that there is career guidance available for you. For some of you, you feel like you need some help with your career or you need guidance with your career. The ancestors are saying they can give you this guidance, but they're also saying that they're sending you resources here on earth, on the earth plane, so you can get some guidance with your career so you can know how to move forward. And this is a gift from them. This is what they're gifting you with because they want you to move forward in your career in the best way possible to, you know, achieve more wealth, more balance. Um, this is about career balance I'm hearing for many of you moving forward so you can work less and get more, obtain more abundance by working less and having more of a balance with your life and your career. So this is work-life balance guidance that they're going to be sending to you. And 
these resources are going to help you to shift into a new direction with your career. Um, your career may involve you being around a lot of people, okay, or maybe you need to be around a lot of people, but that's okay too. But this is also saying that some of the people that you're around, you need to let go of. It's a lot of baggage. It's a lot of things that are holding you back. If you are around a lot of people or, you know, you work with a lot of people or whatever the situation is, you're going to have to do more protecting of yourself and pulling back from some of these people because these people are holding you back. They're holding you down. They're not... Um, the freedom that you should have. These people are blocking you from that freedom, from feeling free. I just saw 911, so that's Archangel Michael. So Archangel Michael is here helping you as well, guiding you. Um, for many of you, you have a past life relationship here that um, you could be in a past life relationship, but for some of you, you are in a relationship that has expired but uh, or needs or is kind of like it's coming to an end, but you could be coming into, that's what this for me is representing, coming into a connection with someone from a past life. But that's not going to be for everyone, but some of you will be connecting with someone from a past life. You are an alchemist and you are a highly evolved soul. So highly evolved soul means you've been on earth many times. You've had many past lives. You've been a part of this universe for many, many, many you know, so long, okay? Your soul, you're an old soul and you are an alchemist. Again, you know how to create. You know how to use the elements to create. You can create and attract anything. Like I said, your spiritual gifts and your power, it's very strong and intense. In fact, your ability for alchemy, your alchemy abilities are getting ready to be increased by your ancestors, okay? Um, your gift with communicating with animals is getting ready to be increased okay you're going to have a higher level of communication with animals you are a shaman medicine man medicine woman you know how to heal others you know how to heal animals you know how to communicate with animals you have a lot of animal spirit guides as well many of you are a light worker okay you are here to anchor in that light into the earth by being yourself and showing your gifts and your creativity and doing the things that will help others, to help all, to help humanity and the collective. That's what you're here to do. Some of you will have children. Three, Maybe you have three children or you will have more children. You take what resonates. Some of you will have a child this year, I'm hearing. Okay. For some of you, it will be twins or you will have twins. Okay. Um, and some of you will be getting married, okay? Even though you may already be married or um, whatever the situation is, you will be getting married or in some type of, even if it's not marriage, some type of committed relationship. And that's going to be a gift from your ancestors. Okay, let's get into your oracles. So we have abundance, fortune, wealth, plenty. Grateful optimism, joyous view of the future. Wisdom, learning, joy, art, music. Visions of life beyond death. Spirals of manifestation. Listening for truth. Be open to spiritual guidance. Be proactive. Forgive yourself. Okay, let's start here. So... Identify one area of your own life where you're angry at yourself or where you've yet to forgive something you've done. Healing requires forgiving oneself as well as others. Your goal, to love yourself enough to heal. So you're really being asked to love yourself enough and tell yourself that you deserve to heal and to love yourself and forgive yourself. Give, your, give yourself grace Forgive others and forgive yourself. So if situations have happened with people in your life and you're forgiving them, don't forget to forgive yourself with this process as well. And this adds more self-love to yourself. You love yourself on a deeper level when you're 
able to give yourself grace, when you're able to love yourself and to forgive yourself. And this is freedom. Okay, this is how you free yourself. Be proactive. Let me read this. Recognize one of the major areas of insecurity in your life and see how much it disempowers you. Then identify one small action you can take to release that insecure feeling. Your goal to observe whether you're proactive or passive since healing requires proactive energy. You're being asked to be proactive with your healing, but also being asked to be proactive with things in your life, okay? To not take a passive approach, to take inspired, aligned action when you're told to do so, bold and fearless, and to take the leap of faith when you're told to do so, and to trust that even like this man, he's on a mountain, he's feeling safe and secure with his arms up, he's surrendered, he let go, he's trusting that if he falls, he's going to be okay, so this is about trusting the process and not being passive, but being proactive, okay? You have abundance coming in. Again, many of you are going to be wealthy. You're building this generational wealth. This reminds me of Goddess Lakshmi. So many of you have Goddess Lakshmi here with you and Archangel Michael. So there is enough for you. There's plenty. There's never not enough in this universe, okay? So if there's some scarcity issues here or scarcity blocks, you are abundant. You know, you could start saying, I am abundance. I am abundant. I am blessed. I gratefully, happily, humbly receive. Okay. Have a joyous, and this 28 reduces to 10. So that's completion. Some of you may be completing a cycle. Joyous optimism and grateful optimism. So show gratitude for the future, but keep, um, keep being positive, hopeful, and optimistic. OK, because you have some manifestations that are coming in with the spirals of manifestation. This is things manifesting. These are things grounding. These are things that are happening. But you have to keep this positivity and this hope and this gratitude that your things that you've been asking for. 18 reduces to nine. That's like wish fulfillment that your wishes, wishes and miracles are coming true. OK, that these things are happening. But again, it's about being proactive, too, and not being too passive with the things that you want. You know, sometimes we can, when we're manifesting, you know, we can visualize and, you know, write things down or however you manifest, you could do that all the time. But when you're told, when you get the download to like, this is what you have to do to take that action, you have to do it. Because if you don't, it doesn't mean this manifestation won't come through, but it will delay the process from having that passive attitude or like, oh, I'll get to it or, oh, I'll do it. Take that inspired line action when you're told to do so. And then you show your team and the higher power, whatever you resonate with, that you trust, that you trust and you can continue to get more of those downloads to continue to manifest and move forward. Many of you, a lot of your wisdom comes from your creativity. You know, you're able to learn through creative projects through art music and this brings you a lot of joy and again this is how you unlock more of your ancient wisdom more of your intuition this is how you find yourself on a deeper level through the arts and creativity and music okay so whenever you want to tap more into your wisdom get into your creativity learning those type of things, it brings you a lot of joy. Visions of life beyond death. So many of you are going to get a lot of past life downloads, okay? It, especially for some of you, I feel like you've been asking or you've been wanting to know more about your past life so you can heal and move forward in your journey. Things that have been holding you feel maybe are past life connected and like, you know, you want to move forward. You want to heal those wounds. So you're getting ready to start giving visions of your past life. And I want to say, when you start getting visions of this past life, energy, you have to trust it. Although it may seem completely, you know, out of this world, out of control, like no way, I can't believe it. It's not possible. When you trust it, then that's when you will receive more. Okay. When you don't trust it and you deny, then that's when it's shut down. And, you know, the higher power is like, okay, you're not ready. You know, the ancestors want to help you with this. But if you shut it down and be like, no, I don't think so. No way. You have to trust it. Trust in this process and trust the visions that you're going to get. Be open to spiritual guidance. 
Ponder the question, how do you expect your prayers and guidance to come to you, literally, in a vision? Are you someone who says that you're waiting for prayers to be answered because you want guidance that includes a safety net, your goal to own up to your spiritual insecurities and your lack of faith? So you're being asked to have more faith. Have more faith in your prayers. Have more faith. And again, I feel like for some of you, again, you've been wanting things to manifest. Um, You've been wanting your prayers to be answered. You've been wanting these blessings to come through, things to come to fruition. But like this card just said, are you someone who says that you're waiting for prayers to be answered because you want guidance that includes a safety net? That's very powerful and very deep. Because again, when you're told to do something and you're told to take that leap of faith, you have to trust. It can't be a situation where you're like, okay, I'll do this, but what about plan B, plan C, plan D? You have to trust that plan A, that what you were told is the only plan that you need and you just have to go for it, okay? And so if you want prayers to be answered with a safety net, then that means you have insecurities with your faith. You're not fully trusting. So that's something that you have to be really open to. And this is saying open to spiritual guidance. Because again, I feel for some of you, you've been getting guidance to do this, to take action on this, to do this and do that. Because you want these prayers to be answered. You want to manifest. You want things to happen. But again, you're not doing what you're supposed to do when you're told to do it. So you really have to recognize. And I just saw 1111. Okay, that's manifestations. You know, that's that that's that energy right there. And that's that awakening, awakening to the truth of that. So I really hope that helps. Pile three, if no one told you that they love you, I love you. Thank you all so much. I'm so grateful for you. I'm proud of you. Keep going. Keep doing the work. You got this. Please like the video. Please share the video. Comment below. Let me know how this resonated. Um, like this video. If you don't want to say how this resonated, you could just drop a red heart. I really appreciate that. Thank you all so much. And I'll see you in the next reading.